Are you one of the many people totally infatuated with Netflix's new hit series, Bridgerton? Did you know the series was actually based on the novels by Julia Quinn? Did writers follow Quinn's story word for word, or did they make it even juicier? Keep watching to find out. Bridgerton's Impressive Diversity Anyone who has watched Bridgerton can clearly see that there is a good amount of diversity among the cast, including African-American actors. This is something that would not have been the case in the books, which are based upon a specific time in history prior to slaves being freed. Racism was still a huge issue, so the majority of high society would have been white. Two black actors in particular have important roles throughout the show. This is, of course, Reggae Jean Page as Simon Bassett and Adjoa Ando as Lady Danbury. Both of these characters are presumed to be white in the books. The way diversity is shown in the show depicts what life could have been like in a world where there was no racism. Showrunner Chris Van Dusen opened up about his decision to go with a diverse cast, noting that he wanted current day viewers to be able to relate to the show. Simon and Daphne met in a very different way. In one of the most poignant moments of episode one of the show, Daphne and Simon meet by quite literally bumping into one another. Daphne is trying to lose her suitor, Nigel Burbrook, who just can't take a hint that she is not interested in him. Because she is walking with her head turned, she runs right into Simon. She apologizes and then tries to engage in conversation with him in order to avoid having to speak with Nigel. Their conversation hardly goes smoothly with Simon being annoyed that she didn't know his name. This meetup goes quite a bit differently in the books. In The Duke and I, Simon watches Daphne from afar throughout the party as she attempts to get away from Nigel, who just won't take the hint. When he takes his antics too far, Daphne reacts by punching him. That's when Simon steps in and saves the day, making him Daphne's hero. That one steamy scene wasn't as steamy. You know what scene we're talking about, the scene when Daphne and Simon finally get it on. In the show, this wasn't exactly a perfect moment due partially to Daphne's own naivety. She did not really understand how babies are made and didn't realize why it was so important for Simon to roll away at that special moment. Once she learned about the science behind it all, she used it to her advantage despite Simon's unwillingness to have a child. While the couple were in bed together, she changed her position and didn't give him much of a choice. Simon is shocked and angry with her, and this goes on to cause a lot of problems. This scene did cause outrage on social media as some viewers felt that the show shouldn't have included something so graphic. While this version of the scene was certainly controversial, it was nowhere near as disturbing as what took place in the book series. In the novel, Simon is intoxicated and half asleep when Daphne begins to make advances on him. This takes place when he is not in the right state of mind. Daphne wasn't as popular. In the Bridgerton show, Daphne is seen preparing to meet the queen. Dozens of women flurry around her in an attempt to make her appear as perfect and beautiful as possible for her big debut. It is clear due to her status as the eldest Bridgerton daughter and her obvious beauty that she stands out among other girls and turns plenty of heads as she approaches the queen. The queen's reaction could not have been more enthusiastic. She gushes over Daphne, calling her flawless and dubbing her the diamond of the season. After that, Daphne becomes insanely popular with the single men in society. Her success doesn't last long, though, as her overprotective brother soon drives away any of her potential suitors. In the book, Daphne does not make quite as a phenomenal first appearance. In fact, she spends years on the market trying to find herself a good husband. She certainly doesn't stand out among other women and isn't exactly the star of the season by any means. She finds herself in the friend zone with many of her potential suitors and rejects advances by other men she simply doesn't find herself to be compatible with. Unlike the show, she is never involved with any members of royalty. Simon's Lifelong Problem on the show, Simon is portrayed as a smooth, confident, and suave man. It's obvious in how he carries himself and how he interacts with others, especially Daphne. But there is one very notable characteristic that is missing from him on the show that he has in Quinn's novel, a stutter. In the books, Simon is born with a stutter that he carries with him all the way throughout adulthood. He is so ashamed of his stutter that it prevents him from being able to talk to other people. It particularly affects his ability to communicate with Daphne. For whatever reason, the show presents the stutter as something that Simon grew out of as a child. Another major difference in the show is that Simon is presented as a boxer. He is often pictured shirtless while working out or in the fighting ring. This serves as a big part of his identity within the show, but it may come to your surprise that nowhere in Quinn's novel is Simon identified as a boxer. This is likely due to the fact that the stutter he had in the books still existed, and he would have done whatever possible to ensure he did not have to interact with others very often. Because the show decided to do away with the stutter storyline, they likely used the boxer aspect to add more to Simon's character development. 
Plus, seeing him in the ring looks really good on screen. Marina Thompson's Shady History Marina Thompson is not exactly one of the luckiest characters on the Bridgerton series, nor in the books. In the show, we know that Marina is secretly pregnant with a child belonging to George Crane, a soldier. Despite the fact that she is in love with Crane, she is sent to London in an attempt to save her reputation. She is forced to find a partner as quickly as possible so that she can pass off the child as his and avoid a scandal. She struggles to find a mate and desperately tries to end her pregnancy on her own. She fails to end the pregnancy and becomes absolutely devastated when she learns of the death of George. Because she has no other options, she agrees to marry Sir Philip Crane. In the books, there is even less hope surrounding Marina's character. Upon the death of George Crane, Marina does end up marrying Sir Philip Crane but is deeply unhappy in her marriage. This leads to her developing clinical depression that continues to intensify until she takes her own life by the fifth book. As a result, readers don't get to know Marina's character nearly as well as they do on the show. Lady Bridgerton's Surprising Opinion We all know Daphne's mother, Violet, is one of the biggest supporters of her relationship with Simon in the show. She roots for them from the very beginning and is super happy that her daughter is actually dating someone she has feelings for. She goes out of her way to encourage the relationship by inviting Simon over for dinner and preparing his favorite foods. She even advises Daphne to stay away from other men in order to show Simon how much she likes him. In the books, Violet's not quite such a big fan. She is harsh and skeptical as well as very unimpressed by Simon's reputation. At one point, Daphne even reveals that her mother banned her from ever having any contact with him. Of course, she goes against her mother's wishes and continues to pursue the relationship. Violet eventually comes around, but is not necessarily positive about the arrangement. She certainly never prepared Simon his favorite pie like she does on the show. Anthony's never in the dark. In the show, Simon and Daphne both agree that faking a courtship between themselves will help them both out, but that no one can ever know about it. It will elevate Daphne's status enough that she will be able to get the attention of other young men and hopefully find a suitable match. Meanwhile, Simon can be on his own merry way without having young women forced upon him. Shortly after deciding upon the ruse, they both make a pact that they will tell no one of the arrangement. However, in the books, Simon and Daphne decide to let Anthony in on their plan. As Daphne's overprotective older brother, he is initially shocked and furious when he finds out. However, he eventually comes around to the idea once he realizes that this decision is in both his sister and Simon's best interests. He gives in, but only after laying down three rules. The pair could never be alone together, must keep the arrangement a secret, and could under no circumstances do anything that could damage Daphne's honor. Nurse Hopkins helps get rid of Simon's stutter. On the show, we are informed that Lady Danbury took Simon under her wing when he was only a young child. She worked with him and mentored him until he was able to speak without a stutter. She is presented as a type of hero who made Simon the man that he is today. Lady Danbury and Simon have a notable connection on the show, and she often gives him advice from a motherly standpoint. However, in the books, it was not Lady Danbury, but rather Nurse Hopkins who helped alleviate Simon's stutter. The character doesn't even exist in the series. Mrs. Featherington's Husband In Quinn's novel, Mrs. Featherington starts out the series as a widow, and little is known of her husband. However, in Bridgerton, she is married to a man with a gambling addiction. He later dies, leaving the family in financial struggle. This massive plot twist happens in the very last episode of season one, and is probably going to have a huge impact on whatever happens next. After all, you can't be broken in high society. It just doesn't work. So what do you think? Is the Bridgerton story portrayed better in the books or on the show? Let us know in the comments.